Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Celtic Transfer Talk, another Friday, so another one of these, and I swear week by week there's less and less to talk about. Things are getting quite, you know, I'm quite sceptical. I'm not going to say quite spectacle, that's a, that's a Love Island stunt. Um, but I'm, fe- I'm getting quite sceptic of where the transfers and such is starting to get to the point now, I'm like, right, we've waited long enough, is anything going to happen? Because we're getting linked with every Tom, Dick and Harry, and then everything seems to fall through, or it just seems to be false, completely and utterly false. It's not to the point where I'm worried at the end of the day, I think we're still easily going to win the league title and such this season, but nothing seems to be happening, it's quite concerning, especially following some big news today, injury-wise, I think we need to get our arse and gear in the transfer market. Uh, I do trust the manager, I trust Brendan Rodgers with all my heart after last season, um, obviously he knows what he's doing, he's got a plan and such, but when will things start getting in action? We've brought in Johnny Hayes and that's, that's about it right now. Anyway... On to today's news, and as I said, it seems to be less and less week by week, so it's not a lot today, I don't know how long I'm going to be able to drag this one out for, so no 10 minute ad revenue for me. I'm, I'm joking, I don't make any ad revenue anyway. Hey, right, let's, what was that? Hey, right, anyway, who cares? Fucking hell, I'm just rambling shit now. Uh, Sidi Yanko has left the club, that's the first thing we should probably talk about. He has left today to join St Etienne, uh, he left Celtic after only spending two years in the club, never really broke into the side. Had an odd appearance here and there. He was signed under Ronnie Dyla and he never, he never really got the chance. He was loaned out last season after a couple of poor performances in the Champions League qualifiers. So, you know, it's probably right. Well, there was no use for him at the club. He was never going to get in, into the team, I don't think, unless he dramatically improved. But even last season when he was sent out on loan to... Where is it? Was it Bristol he was out on loan to? Even sent out there, he never got a chance due to injury. So we'll never really get to see him develop. Uh, and I don't think there was a lot of stuff he could develop on with that injury. So Yanko has officially left the club, he has joined Ligue 1 side at St Etienne over in France of course, uh, maybe he'll break into that team, who knows, but I just, I don't know if he, if he didn't break into a Celtic team, will he break into St Etienne? Uh, but no fee has been spoke about, I don't imagine it's on a free transfer, so I think we should expect to hear about a fee or something in the next few days, right now there's been no word of a transfer fee, but he's still quite a young guy, what is he, he's like 22 years old or something like that, he's still pretty young, so I don't imagine, I imagine Brendan Rodgers would have left let him leave in a free transfer. Uh, I don't think he would have done that. There probably won't be a lot of money. I'd imagine maybe five hundred to a million, uh, five hundred grand to a million pounds, something like that. Probably was the ag- agreed fee. But we'll soon hear. Maybe it'll probably just remain undisclosed. But I can only imagine there was some form of fee. That's the first thing to talk about. Let me know how you feel about it. Do you think Sadie Yanko should have been given a second chance with Brendan Rodgers, or do you think we've done the right thing to offload him? Personally, I think we have. There was just. No way into the team for him, I think. Although we could probably do with some more options defensively. I don't think Sadie Yanko was one of the answers to those options that we need. Anyway, moving on to the second thing, I suppose, and that is regarding Charlie Massonda. Obviously, we spoke about this last week, and he's been heavily linked with Celtic for the past week now. Uh, the Chelsea midfielder coming to Celtic. We spoke a bit about it last week, uh, that links were being made with him and Celtic. But it looks as though that deal is pretty much off the table, let's be honest. I don't think it's going to go through or happen now a lot of talk his brothers came out and and said listen he's focusing on Chelsea and he wants to keep it that way he wants to remain a Chelsea player um, so I think the deal's pretty much off the table I think it's pretty, pretty much off the table I, I mean I didn't expect it to happen at first I think it was a bit of an unrealistic uh, one to go for because I think he's someone who might get a chance with Chelsea in the future he's still really young he's playing for a top four he's playing for the English champions not even a top four side the champions um, uh, it'll probably will be loaned out or something this year I don't imagine getting a chance with Chelsea but I, I think they would have wanted a bit too much money for Celtic's liking and I think that was always going to be the restriction for us going forward for him so I, I never expected it to go through it would be nice if it did go through but it looks as though the deal for Charlie Masson nearly knocked a glass over uh, it looks as though the deal for Charlie Masson that is pretty much off the table um, I've, I'm not too bothered about that I think there's still other options but this is the thing about we're taking so long and every winger we get linked with is either you know just not going to happen or they move somewhere else Victor Fisher will link with him he's away to Mainz Patrick Roberts has completely fell through but I don't think we're going to get him so you know we're struggling here to bring in someone is Johnny Hayes good enough for Champions League competition we don't know yet and I think that's why we just need that other winger but things are slowing it's slow in progressing and we need that assurance I would say but it looks as though my son is off the table and I suppose there's not much we could do about that there probably will be other options uh, probably a lot of people would be devastated here Max I think he was highly so I think a lot of fans really wanted him to come, come into the team but don't hold your breath it might still happen I'm not saying it's completely off the table but just by the looks of things it looks as though it's not going to go through 
Moving on to the next thing concerning signing a winger, another one that I've been thrown into the talks of signing is uh, Chelsea, another Chelsea player actually, is Pasalic, the Croatian winger, 22 years of age. He spent the past few seasons out on loan from Chelsea, signed back, I think it was 2014, for a fee of £3 million, pounds, and he's not had a look in, never played a first team game for Chelsea, still not played for them, in fact he's just been loaned out as most Chelsea players are, but we are now being thrown in with talks about him, but the question is, how much do Chelsea want for these players? I, I see them as quite unrealistic, I would like to see this Pasalic come in, he's actually had some first team experience uh, over the past couple of seasons at decent teams, so he could definitely come in and I think cut it for Celtic, if you look at his, his stats uh, 16 to 17 season, he spent time at AC Milan on loan, and the season before that, he spent time at Monaco on loan, there are two top divisions in Europe, the Serie yeah, the league in. So he's got that experience, he's got the first team experience that would be needed for him to come in and probably play Champions League football. He's played European football before by the sounds of things. And it's not like he's got bad statistics either. In 27 appearances last season, he scored 5 goals. In the, and this is, the, this is the league alone. And the season before that, in 29, he scored 7 goals. So he has got a few goals in him. I'd imagine he's much more of a playmaker. It's this number 10 role, I think, Brendan is looking for. Someone who's just creative all round. Doesn't necessarily always get assists or goals. He just can spark some and he can be the catalyst for attacking play. I think that is what he is looking for. Pasalic could be the answer. But at the end of the day, how many more wingers are we going to be thrown into that this just not going to happen? We're being thrown, all these names are being thrown about and absolutely nothing is coming from it. So is he just another one of these players? Let me know what you think about Pasalic. Croatian, only 22, but once again, I imagine the tra transfer fee might be quite hefty for him. I think that is just the only thing holding Celtic back at the current minute. Uh, hopefully Van Dijk leaves soon. If we bring in money from Virgil Van Dijk, I think I should go straight into reinvest in the team because you know it's just fresh money and it's not like we we need money desperately. It's not like we're in any financial turmoil or something like that. So. We'll see where things go. I think finances at the end of the day is what's holding us back from going forward in this transfer window. Talking about dipping into the transfer market, um, as this is what it's about, a centre-back is now needed. Bad news coming out today that Dedrick Boyata out for three months. Devastating news after him picking up tremendous form in the second half of last season. Uh, and he's out for three months. This is time now for like Sviatchenko to step up and show how good he can be because I know that see, I, I'm a big fan of Eric Sviatchenko and I feel like he was really unlucky in the second half of the season to be kind of bombed out of the squad by Boyata and I really want Sviatchenko to break back into the team this is the perfect opportunity for him to do so but now depth it's a, the depth wasn't great in a centre-back position as it was I think we've got three decent centre-backs in Sviat Semenovic is I think class I think he showed last season that he's our best defender, defender. our best centre-half anyway and we've got Sviatchenko and Boyata who still have an off an off game in them. They can be really good, but they, you still don't know if you trust them 100%. It's like Simonovic, I know, I, I think we can rely on him. But there's always that little bit of rustiness that you've, you can see in Sviatchenko and Boyata. So I think we've always needed someone, but now that Boyata is out for three months, we desperately, desperately need to bring in another centre-half, in my opinion. That's just my opinion. Let me know what you think. But with Boyata out, should Brendan Rodgers be dipping in, spending the money on a decent centre-half, a Champions League quality centre-half? Because personally, I think it is desperate now. I didn't think it was too desperate with those three, but with only two of them, if one of them goes injured... Uh, around the Champions League group stage time. Who's going to come in? Kolo Turi. Is Kolo Turi as experienced as he is? You can see it in him. You've seen it when he came on for 20 minutes in the last game of the season. And we still don't even know if he's going to remain at Celtic. He's still Nothing's been confirmed. But at the last game of the season, he came on and he was only on for 20 minutes and you could see him struggle fitness-wise. You could see it was, it was quite difficult for him. So imagine him at 90 minutes against a, a pot one side, the Champions League, if Semenovic or Sviatchenko was injured. You can see where I'm coming from. I think this is now we need to really dip in. Centre half, winger, get that sorted out. And I think we'll have a strong, strong team to try and finish in third or second in a Champions League group. But right now, I think that is critical now that we need it. We, we really do need another centre half, in my opinion. I thought we always did need that one with a bit more experience. But now it's desperate because we only have two first team quality centre backs. I would like to see Christopher Ayer break in and get a chance, for example. And a few other young, younger guys... But when it comes to Champions League, how much can you rely on the youth? And, you, you know, they could turn out to be miracles in the Champions League. But is the risk worth it? I think we just need to dip in and get a centre-half of some sort of European quality. So, that's basically it, to be honest, with today's episode of Celtic Transfer Talk. Not much actual stories to talk about, just an overall roundup of the window so far up to this point. 
because, you know, we're not being linked with many players this week, and when we do get linked with a player, it just seems to be absolute bullshit at the minute, so you don't know what to take, what to believe, because nothing is going through, especially with the wingers we're being linked with, so we've got to see. Anyway, if you enjoyed this episode of Celtic Transfer Talk, it wasn't eventful as, a, as eventful as usual, obviously there's stories of left, right and centre to talk about, not so much today, so sorry about that, but if you enjoyed it anyway, you know what to do, hit like and subscribe, I appreciate the support guys, uh, and make sure to turn on notifications in case I'm streaming, because I've started streaming recently. Uh, but until next time, this has been me, Ryan Wolverine, and I'll see you all later.